File item 122, AB 1411. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1411 by Assemblymember Eduardo Garcia and actually in the fire protection. Mr. Garcia. Mr. Speaker and members, 1411 requires the state fire marshal to work with the appliance industry and other experts in gathering information and submitting findings along with recommendations on preventing drier fires and dangers of lint accumulation. Fire experts, the Society of the Blind and the insurance industry identified excess dryer lint as a major factor in home fires each year. Uh, there is no known opposition at this time and I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. With that, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote. I-63, nose 2. Measure passes. File item 123. That's AB 825. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 825 by Assembly Member Rendon and others and act relating to the Public Utilities Commission. Mr. Rendon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In light of the controversy surrounding the California Public Utilities Commissions, AB 825 will change the conditions that led to some of the, the controversy with greater transparency and oversight. At this point, the bill is simple. It'll uh, provide greater transparency uh, by putting information on energy pricing and rate increase, and rate increase applications on the web. Uh, with respect to confidentiality, it ensures that que questions on confidential documents get a hearing. And with respect to independent oversight, it creates a PUC Inspector General at the State Auditor's Office. In short, AB 825 opens up the Commission to greater transparency and ensures that the Commission's actions can be scrutinized through independent oversight by an Inspector General. I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Rendon. Seeing no discussion on this item, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote, I-67, no zero, measure passes. File item 124, AB 1342, clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1342 by Assemblymember Steinorth, an act related to disability access, making appropriation therefore. Mr. Steinorth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, AB 1342 supports the California Commission on Disability Access which works with the business, disabled, and legal communities to address disability issues and compliance before facing litigation. This bill has a strong and unique coalition of support from stakeholders, including California Chamber, Disability Rights California, the California Business Properties Association, and the Consumer Attorneys of California. The CCDA brings these and other stakeholders together to discuss issues related to disability access and find solutions. This bill has no opposition and has received unanimous support through two committees. I ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Stein North. Seeing no discussion on this item, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the vote. Ayes 76, no zero. Measure passes. File item 125. That's AB 1061. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1061 by Assembly Member Gallagher and actually in the flood control making appropriation therefore. Mr. Gallagher, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, I'm proud to present AB 1061. Uh, currently, the state owns fee title easements and land use agreements on about 18,000 parcels of land as part of the state plan of flood control. However, even though these funds are generated by the flood project lands, <laughs> under current law, this revenue goes to the general fund, which is a travesty, members. <laughs> Pure travesty. And I know this bill is probably going to generate the most interest this year. And it's an exciting bill. We're all talking about drought right now, but there's also the prospect of flood, and we need to keep that in mind. So this ensures that those monies generated by those parcels go into flood control maintenance. <laughs> this bill has no opposition. <laughs> so I respectfully ask for your I vote, and I would also mention this is actually my second bill presented. <laughs> And just because you guys were asleep when I presented the first time, it doesn't give me the right to hate you. I ask for your I vote. The California State Assembly is recognized. 
Mr. Gatto, you are recognized. Uh, all right, uh, question for the author, Mr. Speaker. Without objection. Is this your last bill? <laughs> that was good. Damn. It could be. <laughs> okay, on my own time, on my own time. Um, the gentleman from wherever the heck, uh, um, uh, I noticed that you have a habit of talking a lot. Uh, there's a lot of adjourned memories that are done uh, every session, and I'd like you to address, perhaps in your close, what this bill will do to address the obvious demographic crisis in your district. <laughs> Mr. Gallagher, you may address that now or after numerous comments. On I'll the address phone. it in my close. Mr. Allen, you are recognized. Thank you very much. Um, in relation to uh, AB 1061, this bill deals with the Sacramento and San Joaquin uh, drainage district. Given the serious and critical drought in California uh, over the past four years, I'd like to ask a question to the author, if I may. Without objection. Uh, to the author from Nicholas, California, what exactly is the purpose of having a drainage district if you have nothing to drain? <laughs> Mr. Well, Gallagher, Mr. You Speaker, as I said in my opening, you know, I know we're all focused on the drought right now, but there is the real prospect of flood as well. There's a lot of people talking about an El Nino uh, coming next year. So it's important that we continue to maintain our flood control structures as well. This bill will do that. And believe me, there is still drainage that happens. We have had rain, just not, not enough of it. Mr. Jones, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I would like to remind the Speaker and the members that throughout the day today, the the author has encouraged us several times to be thoughtful and to think about the bills and to read the language and to be mindful, I think were some of the words that he's used earlier. And then uh, in his opening accused us of being asleep uh, when he presented his first bill. And I'll also point out for the members of the floor that he's been quite, uh, very, very quiet since lunch. So I'm thinking maybe he had a big lunch and maybe he's been asleep uh, since lunchtime. And just based on his recommend recommendation of being thoughtful and based on the questions on the floor today that I don't think he's accurately uh, answered, I would recommend that we all be thoughtful and think about this bill some more and send it back to committee so that we can think on it some more. Thank you. Mr. Alejo, you're recognized. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, question for the author? Without objection. Thank you. I find this bill also most curious um, for my colleague from Nicholas, wherever that is. But when he was campaigning, colleagues, he was saying that the Golden State is now the broke state. But yet here he has a bill where all the money being generated from these rental and lease properties, he wants to now use it to pay the bills for this uh, drainage district. How can that be? Are we broke or are you making all this money and now you want us to give you authority so you can pay the bills in your district? Well, if we keep passing all the bills proposed by my colleague from Watsonville, we certainly are heading to bankruptcy <laughs> in this state. I'm proposing... Answer, answer the question. I am simply proposing that the revenue generated from our flood control projects go back into the flood control projects. Simple common sense solution. Well, we're bo both of us are lawyers, and in a court of law, you would not be answering the question that was asked. Um, he was also calling himself the de fierce defender of North State water rights last year, but now he sounds more like a salesperson of water rights. But considering that he did go to a very good law school, UC Davis School of Law, King Hall, I guess I could vote for this bill today. Mr. Williams, you are recognized. Well, judging from uh, the discussions today um, and uh, the, the willingness for the author to uh, talk on many different bills, I, I think that flood control is enough of a pretext to have another tirade about AB 32. Um, 
or maybe maybe not. Maybe that's not quite close enough, and uh, we should just say say aye on this district bill. Mr. Levine, you are recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Permission to question the author? Without objection. Yeah, my, for my colleague from Nicholas, um, you had mentioned flood control. You also had recommend, uh, made a mention about El Nino next year. Uh, I think my colleague from Salinas and I were, were very interested in a lot of your positions, and I would have to quote your website where you talked about the great values of immigrants that made this state great have been tossed away in the name of political correctness. And in light of that, should we flood your district with Los Niños? I'm not even sure how to answer that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Gallagher, in your close, you may also wish to address that it's the tradition of this House for members of the same party to haze fellow freshmen. <laughs> Mr. Wilk, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In this era of term limits, I just have a question for the author. I want to know if he ever conferred with his predecessor Without objection. on this particular issue. Without objection. On this particular issue, no. But I have conferred with my predecessor on many occasions, yes. Thank you. I figured you didn't because uh, your predecessor was Dan Logue, and the way that he handled flood control is he just wore his pants up to here. In fact, that's a much more fiscally uh, prudent way to handle this issue than the way you're doing it, robbing money from the general fund. I urge a no vote on this bill. All debate having ceased. Mr. Gallagher, you may close. Well, Mr. Speaker, first of all, my predecessor is not here to defend himself, so uh, I take umbrage at uh, my colleague from, what, Santa Clarita? I don't even have to look at the. I don't even have to look at the paper. Um, anyway, I appreciate all the the good naturedness. I want to note that I did only talk twice on the floor today, <laughs> but I, I realized that it was so impactful that it just. <laughs> <laughs> and I really don't talk all that much. <laughs> uh, but this is an important bill, and I urge your I vote. Thank you. With that, the clerk will open the roll. All, all members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. The motion to move a call requires a second. The clerk will close the roll and tally the vote. Ayes 56, noes 9. Measure passes. Moving to file item 126, that's AB 68. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 68 by Assembly Member Waldron and Act Related to Medi-Cal. Ms. Waldron, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Tough act to follow. Um, I rise today to present Assembly Bill 68 which creates an expedited 48-hour appeal for Medi-Cal patients with epilepsy, allowing them to promptly access the drugs they need to control their condition. Right now, patients have to go through multiple appeals processes and experience significant delays in order to receive the most suitable drugs to treat their condition. Epilepsy is a life-threatening illness Medical ex experts say that the first treatment is typically the best chance to get the disease under control. AB 68 passed the Health and Appropriations Committees unanimously, and I urge your I vote. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Waldron. Seeing no discussion or debate on this item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote. I-72, no zero. Measure passes. Members, we are going to move back in the file to file item 73. That's AB 174. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 174 by Assemblymember Gray and others, an act relating to the University of California, making appropriation therefore. Mr. Gray, you may open. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, AB 2232 provides ongoing funding to the San Joaquin Valley Program in Medical Education, otherwise known as PRIME. The San Joaquin Valley is a region of our state which faces economic and social challenges, including historic shortfalls in medical infrastructure and physician access. PRIME is a partnership between UC Merced, the UC Davis School of Medicine, and UCSF Fresno, which educates doctors with a focus on the Valley's unique medical challenges. PRIME programs have been highly successful at the campuses of UC Irvine, Davis, San Diego, San Francisco, and Los Angeles, and the Merced program has been no exception. This bill ensures this excellent program has a reliable source of funding to continue educating doctors in the Valley. The bill has received bipartisan support in committee and is supported by the Primary Care Association, the Department of Insurance, and Valley Children's Health Care. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Ms. Gray. Seeing no discussion or debate on this item, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote. I-68 knows one. Measure passes. Members, we are going to move to file item 127. That's AB 156. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 156 by Assemblymember Perea and others and actually the greenhouse gases. Mr. Perea. Mr. Speaker and members, AB 156 would ensure that disadvantaged communities have the ability to apply competitively for greenhouse gas reduction fund money by establishing a technical assistance program at the ARB. Uh, colleagues, this uh, technical assistance program is modeled after the very successful program that, is, uh, that takes place over at the State Water Board, um, which allows disadvantaged communities the opportunity uh, to apply for these funds. Uh, while we make funds available, not every community is in the same position to hire grant writers and, and uh, hire professionals to ensure that that money comes back into their community. So AB 156 helps uh, small disadvantaged, disadvantaged communities apply for these funds. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Perea. Seeing no discussion or debate on this item, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote, I-74, no zero. That measure passes. <clears throat> File item 128, AB 403. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 403 by Assemblymember Mark Stone and others and actually in the public social services. Mr. Stone, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, AB 403 is probably the most significant change to the foster care system in a long, long time. It's the culmination of years of small change to the system trying to improve outcomes for our kids in the foster care system when those outcomes have been far too negative for, I think, any of us to be able to tolerate. The Department of Social Services did a report in 2015 looking at the congregate care system, that is the group home system, and it came up lacking. It came up wanting. This bill, and I know you've read all 205 pages of it and know it all very well, but it changes that system significantly. There are a lot of stakeholders who are concerned and who are watching this because change is not easy. And to be able to move the natural need or the natural demand for group homes, move those kids out into more home-based setting. It's something that is critical for us to do at this point. That's what AB 403 does. It changes the, the kinds of group home settings to more short-term intensive care that they need, provides better wraparound services in more home-based settings, but it also starts to create a framework to be training, educating foster parents, kid care parents, the way that they need to be supported, the way that they need to be trained so that they understand the traumas, the issues of the kids coming to them. The challenges in this bill is that it is complex and it is detailed. We are working with a broad coalition of folks across the state, including the Department of Social Services, the counties, probation officers, many, many others. We've been taking amendments trying to address issues as they come along because it's a significant change. But make no mistake, this will not be an easy change to implement, and it will not be an easy change to put in place because it is such a change. But it is past time when we should keep our head in the sand, accept the status quo, and accept the negative outcomes for these kids who need us to stand up for them. 
If we can take care of our foster kids, if we can take care of our, those families in that level of need, we can take care of all other kids. So I ask you to work with me on this bill. Vote for this bill. Let's move this policy. Let's make this change for our kids in California. It's long past time that we did this, and there will be more changes to come, even after this bill is put in place. It is critical. There's too much at stake to not stand up for our kids in foster care. And I request your aye votes. Thank you, Mr. Stone. Mr. Harper, you are recognized. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a question for the author. Without objection. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the Orange County Board of Supervisors has been requesting uh, amendments to your bill that would allow the county to continue to utilize its emergency shelter when, uh, when immediate placement of foster children is not an option. Uh, are you working uh, in, in regard to those amendments? I'll answer that question. We have been working. There are 10 counties in the state that have shelters, and we certainly have been working with them. I'm not sure we're going to make all of them happy. I'm not sure we're going to make the Orange County Board of Supervisors happy. But they have to look at the outcomes for their kids in, the, in Orange County and make sure that they are responsible to those kids. As I said, not every county, not everyone's going to be that happy with the changes that we're making. Driving such hard changes and significant changes is not going to be easy. But it's worth doing. And that's what we're trying to do. We're working with the 10 counties that do have shelters, trying to find a way that those shelters are not perpetuating the kinds of harms that have happened to kids there, that they are productive, and that they are still working towards outcomes. And for example, it means reducing the, the amount of time that kids stay in shelters, because most counties have shelter stays far too long for the benefit of the kid. Thank you for uh, allowing me to ask a question, and I appreciate the author's uh, uh, comments and concerns. And I'll be voting for this to move it forward and uh, just ask the consideration of those uh, stakeholders. Thank you. Mr. Cooley, you were recognized. Colleagues, as chair of the Select Committee on Foster Care, I'm grateful for Mr. Stone's consistent leadership on this, in this area the last several years. This is a very important bill. And in general, our work is to figure out how the law which has preceded us uh, is reshaped to better achieve its outcomes, the outcomes that, as we stand on this floor, we see are the important outcomes to achieve. Very important bill. I'm pleased to rise in support of it. With that, we will open the roll. All members voter desire to vote. All members voter desire to vote. All members voter desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tie the vote. I-77, no zero. Measure passes. File item 129, AB 530. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 530 by Assemblymember Rendon and others enacting to Los Angeles River. Mr. Rendon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. AB 530 uh, requests that the Secretary of Natural Resources work with the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors in order to create a revitalization plan for the entire Los Angeles River. I know a lot of folks have heard about a lot of the great developments that have occurred along the upper river, uh, of, of the upper part of the Los Angeles River. However, a lot of that development has been uneven, and the lower river remains underdeveloped and, quite frankly, without, uh, without a master plan. This bill would help to deal with that. It would help to create a master plan. It would not interfere with the City of Los Angeles' plan. It would not interfere with the City of Long Beach's plan. It would simply fill in the gaps. Uh, the district that I represent, uh, the, the river cuts through the district that I represent. It's a district that is uh, park poor. This would help create a lot of recreational opportunities, and I ask your eye vote. Thank you, Mr. Rand. Mr. Gomez, you are recognized. Mr. Speaker, members, I rise in support of AB 530. Um, the Los Angeles River runs from Canoga Park east to uh, the east side of Los Angeles and south through uh, Mr. the gentleman from Lakewood's district and all the way through Long Beach. This is a 51-mile river, and it should be treated as such. So I'm very um, proud that the gentleman from Lakewood has introduced this bill to fill those gaps because once uh, we build a continuous parkway throughout the entire region, I think we're going to bring in more investment, more recreational opportunities, and restore the habitat that's uh, desperately in need of restoration. So I ask for an I vote. Seeing no discussion or debate on this item, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote. Who desire to vote, clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote. I-76. No zero. Measure passes. File item 130, AB 1012. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1012 by Assemblymember Joan Sawyer and others, enacting to people instruction. 
Mr. John Sawyer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. AB 1012 will, pro will prohibit school districts from assigning any pupil to a course period without educational content. It was 61 years ago that the NAACP and Thurgood Marshall prevailed in striking down the notion that separate schools can be equal schools. The Supreme Court Chief Justice, California Earl Warren, uh, delivered this decision in ambiguous, unambiguous terms. In the field of education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. We should all be proud that California's Constitution guarantees every student the right to an equal education. But the journey to equality is not yet completed. It is a long road, and AB 1012 is another step on that journey. When I went to school, homeroom did not mean being sent home, but it's happening today. Kids are sent home for so-called home periods. Other kids are being warehoused in contentless, fake, no-credit classes where nothing is being taught or learned. They are being deprived of their equal right to an education. We can't allow any doubt about whether it's okay to warehouse our, our kids in fake classes instead of offering them a real education. I ask for your support on AB 1012. Thank you, Ms. John Sawyer. Seeing no discussion on this item, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the vote. I 77, no zero. Measure passes. File item 131, AB 766. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 766 by Assemblymember Ridley Thomas, an act relating to child health. Mr. Jones Sawyer, I'm sorry, Mr. Ridley Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, I, and I uh, am glad to be associated with the gentleman from South Los Angeles with a hyphenated last name. Uh, I would like to present AB 766, which would require the Department of Public Health to give preference for grant funding for uh, the public school health center program to schools with a high percentage of students who receive free or low cost um, health care coverage through the Medi-Cal program. School-based health centers provide a great deal of access to health care in our state and I would respectfully request an I vote on this uh, important measure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Ridley Thomas. Seeing no discussion or debate on this item, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tally the vote. I 77, no zero. Measure passes. Moving to consent calendar, members. Does any member wish to remove an item from the consent calendar? Seeing and hearing none, the clerk will read the second day consent calendar. Senate Concurrent Resolution 47 by Senator Fuller and others relative to National Military Appreciation Month. The clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll and tally the vote. Ayes 75, no zero. The consent calendar is adopted. Members moving to announcements. The session schedule is as follows. Thursday, June 4th, floor session at 10 a.m. Friday. June 5th, floor session at 10 a.m. All other items remaining will be passed and retained. All motions shall be continued. Seeing and hearing no further business. I'm ready to entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Holden moves. Mr. Gallagher seconds. That this House stands adjourned until Thursday, June 4th at 10 a.m. Quorum call is lifted. Jones vote change, file 90, AB 662, no to not voting. Jones, Assembly Bill 662, no to not voting. File 104, AB 988, no to aye. Jones, Assembly Bill 988, no to aye. Medina, file item 125, AB 1061, no to aye. Medina, assembly.